Do you have questions about what could be going on with your liver? Maybe you found that you have fatty liver on a test of some kind, an image, etc. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at the stages of fatty liver disease. We're going to look at how the body and the liver in particular progresses through those stages and some key characteristics on blood work and imaging that you might find at different stages. And we're also going to address what the most important thing is to reverse it when that's possible. We'll also talk about when it may not be possible to actually reverse fatty liver disease or NAFLD. For most people, this is going to come down to managing your insulin resistance, and we'll talk in detail about that in this video. So as I said, my name is Dr. Taranella, and I make these videos to help you go beyond basic health, but this particular video isn't tailored to any individual. So please read this video disclaimer before we jump into the video details. So in this video, we're going to discuss the stages of fatty liver disease and fatty liver, also known as non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, aka NAFLD, can present in a lot of different ways. Most people find out that they have some kind of fatty liver or fatty liver disease after having some kind of imaging done, like an ultrasound. Oftentimes, the imaging wasn't even being done to look at the liver, so it's an inconsequential finding. Maybe you had some abdominal pain, and now your liver ultrasound shows fatty liver. So it's important to know that while this may be alarming to you, it is very common not that it's normal, but it is very common in today's population due to higher incidence of insulin resistance, obesity, and diabetes. Still, not all types of fatty liver disease are the same, so it's important to have an idea where you're at in terms of the spectrum of fatty liver disease. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Oftentimes, it's abbreviated NAFLD, also known as NAFLD for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So NAFLD is a broad term that encompasses the range of different liver conditions characterized by accumulation or infiltration of fat into the liver cells, also known as hepatocytes. While some people with this NAFLD may consume alcohol, these individuals are getting this condition from non-alcohol related reasons. As you'll come to understand, fatty liver is closely associated with metabolic risk factors like obesity, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, and the like. Simply just having increased abdominal girth can put you at higher risk for developing fatty liver and has to do with how your body is processing the food that you're putting in. We're going to discuss that. Of course, alcohol can damage your liver directly and this is really the distinction here is that fatty liver is closely associated with those metabolic risk factors and the subsequent damage coming from the poor metabolism of certain macronutrients and alcohol is having a direct impact damaging those liver cells. So alcohol does still play a role in as much as it's a carb contributor in contributing to metabolic insulin resistance burden. So steatosis is the earliest and mildest form of NAFLD, and it refers to the accumulation of of excess fat in the liver cells and liver tissue without significant inflammation or liver cell damage. There is still some occurring there, but it's not as pronounced as in the later stages. The other thing too is steatosis is usually considered reversible and not going to necessarily progress to more severe stages of NAFLD in every individual. That is, of course, if you get your act together and try and reverse some of these insulin resistance markers. So for most people, it basically involves keeping your insulin resistance numbers in check so that the accumulation of fat goes down. In particular, this is going to have to do with triglycerides. As noted in other videos on insulin resistance, carbohydrates get stored as glycogen and when you have your glycogen stores that get filled up, that extra carbohydrate then gets stored as triglycerides. So you have one storage place for that glycogen and glycogen just being a storage form of glucose. One of the main sources is your liver and then the muscles. So once those areas get filled up, then the body's going to start making more triglycerides as long as it doesn't need those carbohydrates for immediate use like you're doing a marathon or something. So after the glycogen stores are filled up, starts making triglycerides. And depending on how much is there, if you're consuming way too much for what your body needs, you're going to make more and more triglycerides. And those triglycerides get exported and stored in fat tissue. 
if there's so much triglyceride and carbohydrate, the body can't really deal with it. Some of it is going to be stored right there in the liver as fat accumulation. And that's basically what we're looking at on the ultrasound or other diagnostic imaging showing this steatosis. The next stage or second stage of NAFLD is referred to as NASH. And with NASH, it stands for non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. This is a more advanced stage of NAFLD characterized by the presence of more inflammation and actual liver cell damage in addition to that fat accumulation. So steatohepatitis, steato is fat, HEPA is liver, and itis is inflammation. The inflammation and damage seen with NASH actually resembles that seen with alcohol liver damage as well, but it occurs in those who don't really consume significant amounts of alcohol. In many cases, they don't consume any alcohol, and they may go to doctor's appointments one to two times a year, and over many years, that doctor may be telling them to stop drinking even though they've already mentioned to the doctor that they actually don't drink alcohol. They may consume alcohol on very rare or maybe never, but still the elevated liver enzymes is still making the doctor think that they're consuming alcohol when it's really coming from other sources. This is something I actually have heard several times from many different patients. So yeah, in this case, what's happening is those excess triglycerides start to damage the liver cells. And when the cells are damaged, they die and the contents start to open up. And the enzymes that are in there are what we see on the blood test. So when you have elevated liver enzymes, that's hepatitis, inflammation in those cells. Now, just because you have elevated liver enzymes does not necessarily mean that you have NASH. There are many other reasons people can have elevated liver enzymes. You should definitely check out my other videos on elevated liver enzymes to get a more broad understanding of some of those things and also talk with your doctor because they're really going to be able to diagnose this. But putting the two together, the elevated liver enzymes with a diagnostic image showing that you have fatty liver, that usually does suggest that there's some inflammation due to the fat accumulation and that you may be closer to this second stage. Now, still, this can be reversed at this stage when we can see the damage occurring in the blood test showing elevated numbers and things like the AST, ALT, and GGT, that's when you want to really start to consider taking some action. And if you've just had these tests done and you haven't had an image, the image is going to help really motivate you to reduce the triglycerides and reduce the overall damage that's occurring. You do have to make sure that's the reason, otherwise you may be swimming upstream. The most common denominator here is those insulin resistance numbers being elevated like triglycerides, for instance, and the diagnostic image showing fatty liver. So if left untreated, NASH can definitely be a progressive problem and lead to more severe problems, including fibrosis and cirrhosis, and eventually potentially leading to hepatocellular carcinoma. So the next stage of NAFLD would be when there's more fibrosis occurring. So fibrosis refers to the formation of scar tissue in that liver as a response to the ongoing liver damage to those cells. So the cells start breaking open more frequently. You know, you get a lot of this going on and the body can't keep up with all that and eventually just lay down some scar tissue so that it doesn't have to continually try to catch up and repair and make new cells there. There's just too much for the body to deal with. It'll just put down some scar tissue. And once that scar tissue has occurred, that becomes much harder to reverse. In fact, it's said to not be reversible at all. And then that's probably the case. But just because you have some fibrosis going on, the liver is a, is a very large organ and can regenerate and build new tissue as needed, not forever. Once there's enough damage there, it's not going to be able to keep up with the demands that the body needs for processing toxins and different things. So with this third stage of liver fibrosis, it's usually going to come in individuals which have had NAFLD for a while and have had elevated liver enzymes for a while, leading to this scar tissue buildup that's usually going to occur over many years, not weeks or months. And it represents, again, a more advanced stage. This type of thing can be checked with a special type of liver ultrasound, which is usually the main stay of treatment. Biopsies can also be done, but that's not usually done these days. Mostly liver ultrasound, which will tell you kind of how much fibrotic tissue is going on in the liver itself. 
And within that liver ultrasound, it'll kind of get some stages there as well. Cirrhosis is the fourth and most advanced stage of liver disease. And with this, there's permanent scarring. And that scarring has occurred in so much of the liver tissue that certain parts of the liver functioning start to become compromised. Yes, you may still see elevated liver enzymes. Sometimes you don't necessarily see that, but you'll also start to see decreased platelet count and other clotting factors may start to decrease as well as other proteins in the blood. You may not be making enough of those because a lot of those do come from the liver tissue. Other complications you may see is portal hypertension. This can lead to a lot of other problems that I'm not going to cover here, but you certainly can have some swelling in the abdomen and in the extremities as well with this. So basically, if you have fatty liver, it's important to make sure that your liver enzymes are under control. And you can see my other videos on high liver enzymes for what that means. But basically, you want them to be under 25. And even if that is the case on one particular test, you still want to also make sure that your insulin resistance numbers are normal first and foremost. And you can check out my other videos on insulin resistance and different labs to check on that. Keeping these insulin resistance markers under control and Doing that for long periods of time is the best way to start to reduce the fat accumulation and reduce any damage that may be occurring in the liver tissue. The more you check the numbers and see that they're normal, the more reassurance you can be that you're on the right track. You want to pay particular attention to consumption of things like fructose, and it may even be important to check your iron levels. This inflammation in the liver can lead to excess accumulation of iron in the liver and can be seen as elevated ferritin. You want to pay particular attention to elevated fructose, as fructose can be particularly damaging to the liver cells. So things like high fructose corn syrup and even certain fruits that have high amounts of fructose can be particularly damaging to those liver cells as it relates to the fat accumulation in particular. Now, as far as imaging, I mentioned a few different options. There's a general abdominal ultrasound, which will look for general fatty liver. And then there's a specific ultrasound looking for fibrosis. These are the general diagnostic tests that will help you understand what's going on with your liver tissue in more detail. Keep in mind that you do have to layer multiple pieces of information together in order to come to some conclusions here. So that's why it's important to get all the information through your doctor and run it by your doctor, and they'll be able to help you put the pieces together if you're concerned about having NAFLD or fatty liver and what the long-term implications might be. It may also be important to get your iron levels checked as elevated iron may be a contributing factor to the progression of NAFLD. And I'll discuss this in detail in the next video on too much iron and the liver. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding of the stages of fatty liver disease. If you do have questions about anything in the video, definitely drop them in the comment section. If you want a more useful and customized answer, consider joining the membership program. With the membership, I'll be able to dedicate more time and attention to your questions and hopefully make them more useful for you. Either way, I'll definitely try and answer your questions. So leave me some comments if you have them. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.